This is Deliverance Ministry FM video cast number thirty. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Deliverance Ministry FM, where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry so you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively. This is Dr. Don Ibbotson, and I'm here with my co-host and colleague, Dr. Phyllis. Yay. How are you today, I'm Phyllis? I'm doing great. Thanks, Don. Good, good. We're ready and excited to do a uh, another podcast for you. And I'll tell you, this is a first. Of all that we've done, this is the first podcast that we're that, that we're going to conduct today that, we're gonna, that is so long that we're going to have to split it into two parts. We looked at doing it all in one, and it was going to be too long, and we try to keep these in manageable half an hour or so bite-sized chunks for you and so we felt like rather than try to do one it wouldn't be you know comprehensive enough we split it into parts one and two so with that let me tell you what the topic is about this topic is on spiritual roots of sickness and disease and part of the reason that we've uh, that it's going to be so much to cover is that we've got a lot of information to share. We've got some teaching things we want to share. We we want to, and and really in the second or part two of this, we're going to give you more of our um, success stories and our experiences with clients and whatnot, getting getting healed, if you like, from from sickness and disease. So. Um, so we've got a lot to cover and in this first one we kind of want to lay kind of the groundwork for you explain what we mean by spiritual roots of sickness and disease and that's you know going to take some time and then as I say in part two when we release the next one we will review some of this but really focus on and show you some very specifics of, of how God's moved to bring healing to people um, after dealing with some of the spiritual roots that are behind it and so with that kind of meandering preamble um i think we'll just jump right in here and get started on on what i and I, it's tough to do i'm going to say this and uh, so please bear with me here as we you know we're, there's no videos there's no powerpoints there's just i just want to try to share some teaching with you because i feel like we need to do that be, to, to to explain what we mean by spiritual roots of sickness and disease so just fasten your seat belts and I'll try to hopefully make it as clear as I can here. If you followed a lot of our teachings and what we listen and what we teach on and our approach to deliverance is we, we use the concept of a body, soul, and spirit model where a person has a body, uh, is in a body, a physical container. We have a soul where our mind, memory, and emotions are. And, and then we have a spirit man that we come to Christ, we get born again, we get a new spirit, but we don't get a new soul. And the elements of deliverance ministry, which is the driving out of demons, is we, we teach and help people to understand that the demonic spirits can be residing in our soulish realm, in our soul, and in our body. Demons can reside in our body and in our soul. And if they're, if they're in our soul and they need to be driven out, that's deliverance. If they're in our body, then they, we need deliverance too many times for those demons to come out so the healing can manifest. And so that's the concept we believe and teach and, and on, you know, just with no ifs, ands, or buts, that sickness and disease is from the demonic realm. Jesus doesn't want us sick. He wants us healed. It says, mm -hmm. by his stripes you were healed. And he is, and the good news for us today is that he has given his church body of believers and we're above and beyond we're part of that just like just you are he's given us power and authority to bring healing and deliverance to people and so that's kind of the premise kind of a high level flyby of of, of just what we're going to be talking about here and now i want to move in to talk a little bit about healing for a moment or two we we see and obviously in the bible that jesus did heal mm -hmm. right there's instances in scripture he came across sick people or sick people with injuries or disease were brought to him he healed them mm -hmm. and i tell people when it's you know there's a god's will will be healed they say well look at everybody that came to jesus or was brought to him in faith he healed them Amen. every one of them and, and we didn't see instances where he would lay hands on them mm -hmm. he would lay hands on people to sick to heal them and we i mean this is where he didn't but certainly in mark 8 23 he laid hands on the blind man luke 4 40 it talks about laying hands on people and healing all who were brought to him so we understand that that jesus healed people mm -hmm. through laying on of hands but there's a there's a, there are other scriptures but there's there, the one i want to highlight on in scripture that talks about 
instances where Jesus brought about physical healing through deliverance. He drove a spirit out right. of a woman. And that account is in Luke 13, where it says a woman who was crippled by a spirit of infirmity. She was a daughter of Abraham. She was a daughter of Abraham, a believer. And so we've talked about these and gone over these and other, some other podcasts. I encourage you, like I say, to subscribe and listen to all the podcasts that we have. But sometimes healing comes that way. And mm-hmm. If you need a deliverance from a spirit of infirmity there in your body, then you need then that's got to happen until the healing comes. All right. So that's the element of kind of healing in the physical body. Now I want to talk a little bit about this transition into this concept um, that the notion that these spirits that are in our body or, or um, that many times those spirits that are in our body were invited in by other spirits. In other words, there can be um, uh, spirits that are in our soulish realm mm-hmm. that also that, that are invited in by spirits. And I, and I want to clarify this by, 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 encouraging you to to look at a resource that we use and we rely on heavily that we got exposed to year ago years ago it's a book called a more excellent way uh, it's by a gentleman by the name of henry wright and he is a base a, a pastor he has a ministry in georgia he's a pastor he's not a doctor he's not a psychologist um, and he's done a lot of work yeah. over the years on healing and spiritual roots of sickness and disease. And that's the title for this podcast. And, and just to say it as clearly as, as I can here, once again, without the benefit of visual aids, what the contention is that we believe is that spirits can invite in other spirits. In other words, people can have infirmities or sicknesses in their bodies and diagnosed as sicknesses and diseases but many times there were other spirits like fear or anger or depression that invited those in Mm -hmm. right and Mm -hmm. so that's what we want to talk about is sometimes the and 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 a lot of the things that we call sicknesses and diseases and we'll talk about this in a moment in the realm of like syndromes or disorders they're really a lot of the things are in our they're in our soulish realm Mm -hmm. too there's there's well they're physical manifestations rather but there are spirits there that open the door to these uh, diagnoses Mm -hmm. of syndromes and disorders. Mm -hmm. And we're going to touch on some of those in a minute. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to at least get that out there that um, just as to give, give honor where honor is due. We, we really have been blessed um, a lot and we've incorporated a lot of uh, pastor Henry Wright's materials into our approach to deliverance. And, Mm -hmm. and the reason we do that is because when we minister deliverance for people, we, we pray through a list of strongholds and there's three columns of them. And, you know, we started, we've got haughty spirits, we got deaf and dumb, and then we go fear and there's heaviness, jealousy Mm -hmm. and anger. And then in the third column is where the infirmities are. Mm -hmm. And we spend time ministering healing and praying Mm -hmm. for healing and deliverance and that. But, but what's so interesting is that, you know, the, the one, the spirits that open doors, like the pride, the fear, we, we call those out first before we get to infirmity. And so that's the point that like kind of gets you to visualize that it's people, we, we get these diagnoses, we get these labels put on us, but there can be, um, other spirits, other things in our life, uh, things that have happened to us that have opened the door. Mm -hmm. For this sickness to come upon us, and we'll 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 give you some specific examples of that in a little bit here. I won't, you know, try to if it's if it's a little murky right now. I understand. <laughs> we'll clear it up. We'll try, try to clear it up. But the bottom line is this: that spirits um, can open the door to other spirits, including infirmity. So I think that's the thing you want to that we want to understand. And I'll, right out of the shoot here, just Phil has talked about a couple of, and there are others, but we just picked the two things out of Scripture where the Bible gives us very explicitly. Um, uh, two scriptures that show how um, certain things in the soulish realm can open the door to physical problems. Phyllis, why Mm -hmm. don't you give us those? Well, Proverbs 14.30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. So when I have people that come in that have got you know, structural problems or been diagnosed with bone problems or, you know, osteoarthritis or osteoporosis, osteoporosis, whatever it is, inflammation in the joints, you know, typically you'll see something like bitterness or envy that is in there that's associated with that. So when we pray for their healing, uh, we call out any spirit of bitterness that would have brought in that. And then we play healing over those areas as well when we pray. 
Right. And we're just hoping that even as you hear this one scripture, that the light will go on. Yeah. Because sometimes we want to focus and medically, and, and you know, please, please don't think we're not anti-doctors. We love medical people. God loves doctors and nurses. I mean, Luke was a physician, you know, mm-hmm. wrote Book of Acts. But many things in the mental and the emotional realm are just, they're not spiritual physical things they're they're spiritual things mm-hmm. and so but even something like osteoporosis which we people you look at say well that's a physical problem that's not a mental problem that's an emotional problem right. it's a physical and mm-hmm. yes it is but the, if you understand the linkage between body soul and spirit that there mm-hmm. there's a connection between them mm-hmm. that and this scripture would say that spirits of envy and bitterness mm-hmm. if they're involved and entered into that person that can open the door mm-hmm. for that spirit of sickness and disease that spirit behind mm-hmm. osteoporosis for mm-hmm. that for that bitterness for that brittleness of the bones mm-hmm. to start to manifest Absolutely. That. and that's what we want you to to hear start to hear out of this thing that there's things in our soulless realm you know our mind where our memory and emotion reside that can open the door Mm -hmm. to some of these sickness and Mm -hmm. diseases what's another one proverbs 723 it says till an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare little knowing it will cost him his life if you look at that scripture in context it's talked about an adulterer a man Mm -hmm. who's involved in adultery he's with another woman other than his wife and the research that's been done and the resource, the, the things that we've seen and certainly out of Pastor Henry's resources, that many times that people who are dealing with the areas, liver, liver cancer, a lot of these liver problems, if you like, liver cancer very specifically, have been involved in fornicult fornication adultery or or or, uh, or pornography mm-hmm. they've been involved in perversions many times mm-hmm. now you could look and say well there's other things can there be generational things well sure. yes there's potentially but but many times when there are another open doors this is one of the, the things that people have been involved in and mm-hmm. that scripture says it right there it says you know an arrow pierces his liver yeah. like a bird darting into a snare That's so pretty that, clear it's pretty clear and and you know scripture is life and it's word and it's got revelation for us mm-hmm. and that's one of them and there and there's some others too but we wanted to give you those two as just kind of a highlight and 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 basically what pastor henry has done and what we've done here is is assemble kind of a, a library or, or i don't know if library is the right word but kind of a database of of sicknesses and diseases and spiritual roots that we see behind those he's got us he's got those laid out in great detail in his book that we talked about mm-hmm. in a more excellent way encourage you if you have any interest in that to pick a copy of that book up we we have it here of course we have, have an online database because when people come in and they start telling us about their physical issues, mm-hmm. then, you, you know, using osteoporosis as an example and some of these others, we can look and say, well, what are the spiritual roots that are behind those? Mm-hmm. And the, you know, all the, they provide like markers for us. They provide clues. You know, they're just, this is just a history of many times what we see in people's history and you know is very common and they manifest in these and uh, physical types of diseases so mm-hmm. that's the, that's the the viewpoint that you should have as as we go on here and when, there's so many that we can't even begin to cover them all now we're not even going to try we're just going to try to do kind of a high level the flyby of some very specific um, sicknesses and diseases but before I even do that I want to talk a moment about a term you'll hear a lot in the medical world about syndromes and disorders, mm-hmm. right? The world, um, it's the medical um, jargon and the medical dictionary is full of syndromes and disorders. In fact, there's new ones being yeah, daily. Cr- created and invented every day. And the the com- one of the common themes of syndromes or disorders is the medical people will tell you is that the etiology is unknown. I love using that word. I love using the word etiology. Mm-hmm. And I like it. Okay, keep using it. You know, I will, but I, I want to explain because it's a medical term, and basically what it means is that the cause is unknown. Mm-hmm. So if you're diagnosed with a syndrome or a disorder, the medical brains and the medical you know world does not understand what's causing that. And and I want to submit to you to consider that many times. Yeah, you know, many, many times the 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 reason they can't figure out the cause is because the problem is spiritual. It's not medical. Mm -hmm. It's not hormonal. It's not. Now, I'm not saying the hormones can't be out of balance, but it's like if you get the spirits gone and you get then 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 the hormones and you know sometimes these things are just symptoms. They can come back into balance, but they can be spiritual um, spirits behind those, and that's the thing that I want to kind of. implant here is that the notion that when you hear the word syndrome or a disorder think spiritual 
Mm -hmm. think many times there's a spiritual cause behind this and that's been our experience and we want to share um, some of these with you in the realm of syndromes and disorders but also not just syndromes and disorders some of the physical things that people are diagnosed with can in fact um, you know if you look at them sometimes they are syndromes and disorders but sometimes they're they're just diseases and afflictions too and now we use an example of of breast cancer you know so mm -hmm. what you know one of the things we've that we've seen with people who who have uh, who have bre who have breast cancer is it's they've got some problems of bitterness or conflict with their mother and their sisters or their mother-in-law so whatever that comes in in the family unit like that with that kind of stress it can it can set off things in the body that actually will result in we've seen a lot of breast cancer with that yeah that's and that's just one example and you know, there's a, you know, does that mean that there's a spirit behind every cancer? Well, no, no. There's lots of reasons. People, you know, there's smoking and causing right. cancer. A lot of sunburn, environmental environment. Yeah. Of course, there are. But but the fact is, a lot of the things are spiritual, mm -hmm. and and this is one element of it that this is just something that they've seen that there's because the breast is supposed to be a nurturing um, part of a body, and if a person's not nurtured, if there's conflict and bitterness with their mother or sisters, that, that seems to be an open door many mm -hmm. times for, for breast cancer, apart from anything generational here. We're, not, we're just right. honing in on this thing, and so that's, that's one example. And there are so many others. Um, endometriosis. Self-rejection and self-hatred. So the body is fighting against itself, and it's producing all this tissue, so it does have to do with that internal struggle of self-hatred. That many times we've seen is the, is the spiritual roots that are behind that. Mm -hmm. and, and once again, it comes back to the notion that spirits can invite in other spirits. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and it also flows that, you know, that there's a linkage between the body and the soul. So there's torment in the soul. You know, there's, there's bitterness and and uh, or self-rejection, self-hatred, whatever's there that, 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 that the body will just kind of, you know, will feel the effects of that as well and and in fact this is probably a good time to mention this whole notion this uh, whole topic of autoimmune diseases mm. and, and once again <laughs> the, the notion of autoimmune diseases is the is the basically where the body is um, destroying itself right and it's another one where the medical brains don't know why mm -hmm. Why do these diseases happen? Why is the body destroying and turning on itself and and I want to submit to you, from a spiritual standpoint here, looking at the Word of God, that it seems very reasonable to me that, that, that you have spirits in the soul that are trying yeah. to destroy the soul, and the body many times will just follow in right. behind that, what's happening. Right. These devils have a plan to kill, steal, and destroy. They're bringing destruction. They want to destroy the soul. They want mm -hmm. to kill, steal, and destroy. And so these spirits, whether they're there, whether they're, uh, in this case, you know, self-rejection, self-hatred, that, that, you know, the body will follow in behind that, and, and, the, and will follow... And so, you know, trying to treat endometriosis as an example may not be the most fruitful thing in the world unless or until you minister and get free of spirits of self-rejection mm -hmm. and self-hatred, for example. See, that's the point, is if you've got these torment in your soul, it's like, let's get rid of this first. Let's get right. the peace of God. I mean, Jesus is our source. He's our strength. He's our healer. He's mm -hmm. our deliverer. If we've got these spirits there, let's get them gone right. so that the body, the healing can come alongside Amen. of it. So Amen. that's one. What about, what about well, another one? Well, you know, you're mentioning, you're mentioning these syndromes and disorders, and fibromyalgia certainly is the big buzzword around these days, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. Um, and with fibromyalgia, it's, you know, a, it's a fear-based. You said it, a house divided cannot stand. So if you've got a spirit of fear or anxiety that's coming in, it's going to have play havoc on your immune system because, you know, your endocrinological system is going to respond to that. You're, you're going to start dumping like a lot of, you know, chemicals that you would need in reserve and your adrenals will become fatigued and you'll notice fibromyalgia will, you know, it'll come up. And now the, the root to it is they're actually saying, um, not just fear, but drivenness and perfectionism usually cause a woman. Yeah, it's usually in women. That's yeah, the well, big thing. yeah. Most usually, of the time, most in, the time women, in women, I think because we're made differently, our bodies are made differently. We're not made like a man. Obviously you can look at us and see that. And so not to say that we're weak or vessel, but we're, but we were not made to be left alone without a spiritual headship. And that is where I think the fibromyalgia can get its root in there with that fear. You see a lot of women are the spiritual head of the family. 
and you, they've been put in places of having to be maybe the provider or maybe there's a single woman or, you know, there is no husband in the home and there's that lack of spiritual covering. Right. And that is not the way God created us. I mean, we were created to be living in the Garden of Eden. And, you know, we're very far from that. So you throw in the wave of independence that swept across this nation with the women and the way they've taken dominance. And I'm a woman, hear me roar. I mean, that was my generation, me and Helen Reddy, right back in the day. But that, but fibromyalgia could be an, an actual symptom of that, of that fear because it's an awkward place for a woman to be, whether we think we're strong and we can roar, we weren't made to be the head of, we weren't made to be the head of the household, paying the bills, doing all of that, you know, so there's a lot of stress that would naturally come on the body because of that. And it has resulted in things like fibromyalgia. Now, close to that and related to that is another disorder called chronic fatigue. And that, that is also a perfection disorder, but that comes in a little bit more uniquely with not fear of being alone, but a fear of not meeting the parental expectation. And it comes in almost always with a controlling parent or, and their, and that guilt and fear of failure. So these these are both fear-based. Yeah, they're kind of linked. Yeah. They are kind of linked. One of them, you know, the chronic fatigue is more the adrenals. Um, well, excuse me, the fibromyalgia is more adrenal. The chronic fatigue is, um, no, fibromyalgia is, is more the muscle, connective tissue, that sort of thing. But the chronic fatigue is more the adrenals and the dumping. But it all is with the fear. It's all that fear, you know, the, when, you, when, you, when you are shocked or you're afraid of something and you're under constant stress, your body or grow up in that environment yeah grow up in it then you then your body comes out of balance because you you're not you don't know how to move in peace and until and you know one of the scriptures that i like the best is in is in first kings 5 where it says solomon and he's talking about how his father was a man of war and he could not build the temple of God. Well, when I read that, he said he couldn't build it until the enemies were under his feet. Well, when you look at that scripturally in the spirit realm, we're not building temples anymore. We're restoring temples. Those are our temples. We're trying to, and you cannot restore a temple when you have war on every side. You've got to get those spirits that we're talking about fear and everything else under your feet and have peace. And in that place of peace, then you'll have that divine order where your house is not divided and things will come back into alignment. So a lot of these fear-based sicknesses um, are really a lack of peace and a lack of the right, right, proper balance of the position of where you need to be in life. And, and while we're on the topic of fear, I'll just add that, that a lot of the things that people deal with in the gastrointestinal ah, intestinal realm mm -hmm. are fear-based. Absolutely. You know, there's people with colitis, yep. irritable bowel, yep. bowel system, GERD, or gastroesophageal, I think, reflex disorder. Mm -hmm. See the, once again, see the disorder word there? That means, you know, it's just, it's, it's diagnosis of disorder. And so they know things that can trigger these things, but so many times they just don't know what's behind it. And a lot of these are syndromes and your IBS syndrome, these are fear-based things. And so somebody, you know, trying to treat that and get medications for that, it's like, well, if they're a Christian, come in and say, well, look, what's, let's get the fear out of your life. What's, mm -hmm. what's been the open doors for fear? Go through deliverance first. And mm -hmm. then you see the physical, mm -hmm. um, healing can follow. And what's, well, yeah. And I love doctors, but you know, I work with a doctor over in, in the Clearwater area and she'll send me her patients because she'll say, they'll come in, they'll describe to me what they're going through and then I'll label them. You have irritable bowel. Well, that's just the description. That's exactly what they've told me. I'm not telling them what they don't already know. They know they have irritable bowel. Well, I'm coming in, my bowels are irritated, you know. You have irritable bowel. Well, okay, so now we have a name for it. But what is the root of it? Nobody really knows. So, you know, faithfully, she'll send people to us to be delivered from spirits of fear so that the medicine that she gives to alleviate the symptoms will help while they get the actual treatment for the root cause. Which is a better approach because many times people think, well, I got fear or I, I'm, you know, I'm anxious and or I'm, sometimes people, they don't feel anxious, so they're not going to get anxiety medications, but a lot of times that will be the medical cure. Well, sure. if you're anxious, you need anti-anxiety medications, yeah. <laughs> but some people, the fear is so deep, it's internal, it's buried so deep that mm -hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily manifest in them having panic attacks, right? right? It's just, just it's something that's just. They've so learned deep. to live with they've it. They've learned to live with it and cope with it, and that mm -hmm. fear is there. 
And it's what's opened the door mm-hmm. for that um, that uh, these intestinal problems and, and like the other things that you've talked about. So yeah, right. fear is a huge one. I, I would say one. it's probably one of the largest, um, biggest um, open door or spirits that brings in other spirits. We talked a little about self rejection, self hatred, mm-hmm. a lot of you know things like that. Or another one. What's uh, another one is arthritis. No, that's a big one. Bitterness, always bitterness against others. Because when we have bitterness towards ourselves, it involves degeneration. Bitterness against others involves swelling and inflammation. And also self-hatred can influence an immune reaction as well. So arthritis, definitely, we always call out that arthritis. And we, we talked about that before, that a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Well, under a stronghold of jealousy and envy is a spirit of bitterness, usually right. related. And so bitterness will cause that arthritis root. And, and once again, the self, anything that's self-focused to uh, mm-hmm. can cause that autoimmune yeah. reaction because your yeah. focus is on self and mm-hmm. so destroying the self mm-hmm. is what the autoimmune disorders are so well, and we're just giving you some kind of high level examples here there's there's just so many of these we couldn't even begin to go through them all but we want to give you a flavor of these and so hopefully pique your interest so to explore it further rheumatoid arthritis what we found and what we've seen and witnessed is that uh, the, the spiritual root behind our rheumatoid arthritis is self-hatred mm. arthritis can be bitterness towards others but the rheumatoid arthritis seems to be more of a focus on self-hatred so yeah. getting delivered from that learning to accept and love oneself and get rid of guilt and fear and move forward ahead spiritually can help gain and, se- and secure the victory over that and, mm-hmm. and once again if people people medications I, I understand all that and praise god for medications but many of these things to get complete healing wouldn't that be worth exploring yeah it sure would sure would asthma another one Medical people do not know what's behind asthma. Mm. They and, it, and, it, and the understanding, it has nothing to do with what you breathe. In fact, it's classified now, asthma is classified as an anxiety disorder. Wow. There's the disorder word yeah. again. Fear will trigger it. It's a fear anxiety problem. So, mm-hmm. you know, people want to deal with it. And especially for adults, asthma is a problem. It's like, let's look at the spirit of fear. All righty. This, what we've done here in this first part is in, is got, giving you kind of an overview of um, spiritual roots of sickness and disease. We want to conclude this session now and, uh, and then get you set up for, for part two of this where we're going to give you some examples, real life examples of people that have come in with real life problems and, and, and physical things that where we've been able to help them. We think you'll find that interesting. So uh, we, we're going to do that in, in part two of this. But before we sign off, I want to encourage you to um, go to uh, iTunes and uh, look for our um, station. It's deliveranceministry.fm. Leave a review for us there if you would. Go to our website, anbcounseling.com. You can find uh, the tab there uh, on deliver. Uh, on we're an oper- where there's a, a, an area where you can leave. Tell us that you've left a review. Fill out a little form, and we'll send you a complimentary copy of our electronic Ooh. manual. Yeah, it's a good little manual. Down deliverance ministry, it. plain and simple. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. It gives an overview of our ministry and our, our approach to deliverance. And if you'll just leave a review for us, a nice review. Uh, for us yes <laughs> please <laughs> on itunes that would be helpful Tell, also on our counseling and academy websites you can sign up for our resource library where you can get all of our articles um, our podcasts um slide shares and and, and uh, videos uh, see them there in one place you don't have to go hunting all over for everything and we'll uh, get on our email list we'll let you know when we have new ones out and finally just a, a little brief um just kind of hopefully stir some anticipation here for something new we're going to be having we're going to be having kind of a we haven't got a name for it yet but i'm going to call it a ministry partners program where you will be able to become a monthly partner hopefully and a contributor to our ministry to help us grow the ministry of deliverance worldwide and help get it out there and make it available for more people because god's really called us to do that and we really need your help to do that so we'll have more on that to come In the meantime, I want to thank you for listening to this um, podcast and the others. I hope you'll listen to the others that are on iTunes. Uh, Stay tuned. Very shortly, we will have out part two of this series on spiritual roots of sickness and disease. God bless you and thank you for listening. (laughs) 